Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Here to talk about the Chicago Bulls against the Miami Heat. Eastern Conference, NBA Finals. Um, let me say, many of you may know that I like to make boxing predictions online, and that's been great. I've had more than half a million people visit my YouTube channel page. Deep appreciation. I feel very grateful. But I'm actually an equal opportunity better. I'm just looking for great opportunities, and I think you have a great opportunity in this series. Right now, the Bulls are the top seed. They have the home court advantage. They were 36-5 and five at home during the regular season. They beat the Heat three times during the regular season. Uh, they have the reigning league MVP, Derrick Rose. Um, I like the Heat in this series. I like the Heat big. Uh, the Heat are favored. As I always say, I believe gamblers are the smartest people in the room. The Heat are favored. They're a minus 190. I believe you can do better than the series result prop by looking at the exact series outcome prop and by uh, putting equal amounts on the heat to win in four, five, and six games. Right? Understand if the heat then win in four games and you're getting a 15 to 2 on the sweep. If they win in five games and you're getting a 5 to 1 on the five game prop, then you'll actually do much better overall than if you take the minus 190 series prop, right? If the Heat win in six, you actually get your money back. You actually make a slight profit. You don't do as well in six as you would taking the minus 190. But I believe that the Heat have a pretty good chance of winning this in four or five games. Uh, I do not consider this series to be that competitive. Let me just point out a few reasons why. Derrick Rose is on the first team All-NBA. But the only unanimous pick for that first team was LeBron James. And understand that Dwayne Wade, who made the second team All-NBA, has no comparable figure on the Chicago Bulls. In other words, the second best player on the Bulls doesn't come close to second team All-NBA. The Heat just have a deeper talent reservoir. And more importantly, they're playing better basketball right now. Case in point. Take a look at the Bulls series against the Indiana Pacers. The Bulls were losing that first game against the Pacers going into, I believe, the last two minutes of the game. It was only because of a miracle finish that the Bulls were able to defend their home court. Now, understand a hallmark of the Bulls during the regular season was home court dominance. What were they doing struggling against the Pacers at home. It's even worse than that. If you look at the games against the Pacers, especially if you kept track of the scores in the middle of the fourth quarter in all of those games, the Pacers were actually very competitive with the Bulls in the first round of the playoff series. I know the Bulls won it inside of the distance, but that was a very competitive series. And of course, People like me, basketball fans all over America going into these playoffs, thought that the Pacers were a below 500 team, right? That's their record. Yet they were hanging with the Bulls. Well, all I can say is the very next series, the Atlanta Hawks not only came in and roughed up the Bulls in Game 1, they actually won Game 1 on Chicago's court. Right, The Bulls, for whatever reason, have been starting slow in every playoff series this postseason. Now, the way these series go, they're tipping points. As the Lakers know well, if you go out there and you lose game one on your home court, then game two becomes a must-win game. The other team doesn't have to be vastly better than you. They just have to win at the right time. As entertainers know, as comedians know, timing is everything. 
So if the heat come in and the heat are so hot that the Heat just beat Boston in not six games, they beat Boston in five games, right? If the Heat come in and if the Heat win game one, then game two is going to become a must-win situation. And if Chicago fails to hold serve, then they'll find themselves in the middle of an avalanche. Then they'll end up playing the Heat in Miami in front of fans that have been waiting for these Eastern Conference Finals since the season started, who will be looking at their team, will be cheering for their team. The players will feed off the home crowd. And then, of course, as the Lakers know, if you lose game three, it's just a formality before you get swept. No team in NBA history has come back from a 3-0 deficit in the playoffs. And so, um, you know, the Bulls, Right now, they're going to have to find a way, quite frankly, to deal with a Heat team that just beat a team that runs the Bulls' defense better than the Bulls do. Understand that Thibodeau, the Bulls' head coach, used to be Doc Rivers' assistant, right? His forte was defense. He actually helped build the Boston Celtic defense. The guys who run that defense the best are the defending Eastern Conference champion, Boston Celtics, right? They know the system. Well, the bottom line is this. Even knowing the system, KG and crew just got lit up in five games by the Miami Heat, right? The fourth quarter of game five was magnificent. The Boston Celtics had no answers, quite frankly, for LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, both of whom are playing much better in these playoffs and Derrick Rose who as I make this video is shooting 40 percent or less in these playoffs right well all I'm saying is if Boston couldn't stop this heat juggernaut this heat postseason juggernaut and the postseason is different than the regular season then how am I supposed to believe that the Chicago Bulls will be able to do so understand that Carlos Boozer is playing the kind of basketball that had Chicago Bull great Horace Grant say that if he were the head coach of the Bulls, he would bench Carlos Boozer, right? The uh, Bulls are showing cracks. Uh, Derek Rose's shooting percentage is way down. And understand that's a serious matter because Derek Rose, if he weren't a point guard, would be viewed as a gunner, right? The guy averaged almost 20 shots per game during the regular season. Understand that's Monte Ellis territory and you're telling me that his team also is relying on him to be the point guard? They're also relying on him to dole out assists? I expect the Heat with first team all defense LeBron James to find a way to rotate and to shut down Derrick Rose. We know Derrick Rose's game. Right? He can hit that wide open three. He apparently worked on that in the offseason. And he could also drive on anybody. The problem, though, is you can flood the lane with people. I don't think Chicago has enough three-point shooters to actually force the Heat to spread the court defensively. So I'm expecting Derrick Rose to have a very challenging Eastern Conference Finals I'm expecting the Miami Heat to come in and literally win this in five or less. Uh, let me just say this. And if they win it in six, I'm happy with that too. Because that'll get me my money back plus a profit. I do not see Chicago winning this series, nor do I see this series going seven games. The way I would play it to get around the minus 190 is I would put equal amounts on Miami in four, Miami in five, Miami in six, right? Understand if you do that while getting 15 to two on the sweep, five to one on Miami in five, and 11 to four on Miami in six, um, you'll actually do better than the posted series prop line of minus 190 if Miami wins it in four or five. Let me also point out too that the Bulls laid an egg in game one of both the Indiana series and the Atlanta series, yet 
Vegas curiously has them as a uh, two-point favorite for game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. That first game is going to be key. My point to you is simply that the Bulls, even as underdogs in the series, might be overrated. You know, just numerically, two All-NBA guys are better than one. And here you have the best player in the game, LeBron James, with Dwayne Wade going up against Derrick Rose. The other players on the court, all I can say is if you look deeply, you're going to see that the Heat actually have other talent, right? Chris Bosh, um, you know, is on the Heat, um, as well as others. I just think that the Bulls here are out, man. Joachim Noah is a rebounding machine. The problem, though, is if you throw great defense at the Bulls and you force Joachim Noah more than 10 feet away from the basket, he's not going to score on you and he's not going to get the rebound from 10 feet out. Right? I think that the Miami Heat, by contrast, have more rounded players. Right? Zerunas and Elgowskis, in my opinion, has more jump shooting range than uh, Noah. Uh, I know some of my statements sound hard, but you know what? We have to make hard assessments when we're talking about gambling money. Right? Uh, let me also point out, too, that just in terms of three point shooters, you've seen James Jones look great, quite frankly, against the Boston Celtics. Just understand that Mike Bibby also has a three-point shot. Mike Miller also has a three-point shot. Don't be confused by the fact that the Heat started the season slowly. Look at their record in November. Understand they still, even after a slow start, were able to come back and finish with the second-best record in the Eastern Conference. Right? If you throw out that first month, the Heat winning percentage jumps appreciably. I think the Heat are undervalued. I think they flex muscle against the Bulls. Um, I don't expect the series to go seven. I expect the Heat to close out the Bulls inside of the distance. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Uh, also visit my sports page. It's sportspage777.blogspot.com. And of course, check us out on gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.